and Michelle, welcome to the Beyond Jaws podcast. Are you ready to talk about sharks? Yes, I'm ready to talk about manta rays. Manta rays, that's right. We're going to be talking about manta rays, that's right. That's, that's, I'm so used to saying well, it, that's what happens, right? Yeah. Well today, well, today we have an amazing guest. We have Michelle Guerrero, who studies the most charismatic species of, well, flat shark or just shark in general. Some people, the white sharks might argue with that, but he, study, he studies the, uh, the manta ray. His primary uh, area of research and, and conservation is in Ecuador off Isla de Plata, which has the largest known population of oceanic manta rays in the world. Michelle is the founder of the uh, Project Mantis in Ecuador, and he's also the, the uh, Foundacion Megafauna Marinas, uh, which is actually the main organization in, also in Ecuador. He, uh, he's also started a, a diving uh, company down there uh, back in 1997, Exploramar and ran that for about 25 years or so. And then a few years ago, he, he sold that and uh, he's moved on to doing some different things, though he's still very active in the diving community in Ecuador. Michelle did his uh, uh, degree in marine biology from the University Jorge de Teo Lozano in Bogota, Colombia. And I recently had the amazing pleasure to join Michelle and his group in uh, Puerto Lopez in Ecuador to do some diving out at Isla de Plata which coincidentally is the uh, only known location of the sharp fin hound shark, which is a species that's been lost for over 60 years and one that I've been looking for. Michelle, welcome to the show. Okay. Thank you very much, Dave, for that uh, warm welcome, <laughs> and I'm uh, happy to, to be here with you and uh, Andrew. Thank you, very good, great. So I always ask our, our guests their first question, like how did you get interested in marine biology and marine science and and, and manta rays, how'd you, how'd you first get interested in this whole area? Uh, I think uh, since I was a kid, when I was probably four or five years, uh, all my big cousins used to watch on TV when I was a kid, obviously in Ecuador. I remember black and white, they were watching this uh, TV series called, I think in English, uh, like, um, the bogage under under the bogage of the sea or something like that about like a submarine that they have this submarine and they have these guys that they're traveling this submarine uh, and they're dive and they have this uh, little uh, like little a small submarine that goes out of the big submarine and also flies and so it was something amazing to see all these divers and um, also, uh, I still remember that all my uh, my my parents or my uncles used to watch a uh, Jack Cousteau series. So it was fascinating to see all mm -hmm. these people with these like uh, like silver wetsuits and uh, all these like helmets and all these uh, things. So it it gained my attention because uh, everything that were showing underwater was something like amazing and uh, mm -hmm. different uh, species, different animals. And like a different world, so I think that's the was like the the first thing that gained my attention. I got interested in like uh, try to learn something extra about that. Mm -hmm. Where did you so you so you obviously you started going along. You got really interested at a very young age, which is a familiar story for many of our guests, and that's that's terrific. At what point? So you went along, you went to school and everything, and then you decided to, to obviously go in the direction of marine biology. As you get. Did you, you know, why did you end up going to say Colombia versus Ecuador to, to pursue the marine biology area? Yeah, I mean, uh, at the beginning I was, I had two options. Uh, marine biology was one of my options and medicine was the other option because my father is a medical doctor. So mm -hmm. when I end my high school, uh, it was between the two. I really want to go to marine biology school but actually in Ecuador at that point, it wasn't any uh, marine biology uh, university or school. So I was uh, looking for something and uh, it was United States, it was uh, Colombia, it was Brazil, it was some uh, other countries. So I decided at the beginning to go to the medicine school. So I attended medicine school for one year. Actually, I like it, it was nice. But it was my real passion. I didn't feel like really comfortable with some of the stuff over there. So I decided to make a move and then I started like, uh, try to find a real marine biology. So I found this uh, school in Brazil, in the south of Brazil in Curitiba, 
but obviously for that I uh, I mean at that point there wasn't any remember it was no internet no social media nothing so I was like walking and going into the embassies and they were looking in the like yellow pages books so we're looking for some like you know universities telephone numbers no emails at that point try to make contact uh, and try to send letters so when they told me that I can uh, uh, do something with Brazil uh, they make some calls from the embassy but obviously I have to take a six uh, month course to learn Portuguese <laughs> and then when I when I did the same thing uh, for Colombia they gave me the information and obviously they have uh, some kind of uh, of agreements between Ecuador and Colombia and also that it was like really really uh, really good for me uh, in the in the in the thing that I didn't have to go and do a lot of uh, you know uh, exams these that to make the you know the, the entrance to the university and uh, and obviously uh, the the language was the same so mm -hmm. when I was like looking between the two uh, at the beginning it was in, in Bogota Bogota is a city that is a uh, 2,600 meters above sea level. I mean, Quito, my own, my city where I born is like 2,800 meters above sea level. So it was like a similar atmosphere. Uh, but it was like uh, the first three years and then in the Colombian area, then the last three years of the career, then you, uh, everything was uh, developed in the coast, in the Caribbean coast of Colombia in Cartagena and Santa Marta. So I, I decided because of the corals of, you know, warm water, of uh, the beauty of the, a lot of the Caribbean fishes, the, all the all the amazing life around this uh, this area. So I decided to prefer it, and, and I went to to Colombia. So I ended up in uh, studying my career in Colombia. <laughs> yeah, uh, not a bad uh, yeah. place to study either, right? No. Yeah, yeah. it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a weird it was a weird time. It was a weird time because I went to Colombia back in 1989. Oh, so it was like uh, really hard at the beginning because it was, you know, all this uh, war inside or war uh, between the government and the and all these uh, mafias and all these yes. things like local mafias. Mm -hmm. So it was hard times in some point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, but did it affect the schoolings as well, like the school as well? Not really. I mean. Yeah, it affects you know the the society in general. Right. It was it was hard, but uh, people learn to live day by day. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Bogota is a really big city, around like right. seven eight million persons. So it's a big city. So yeah, yes, you have to walk. Uh, I mean, at that time uh, you walk with the. Uh, I mean, you be careful where you're going. Uh, certain areas you're you're definitely not going. Right. So you you know where you can be safe or not. Unfortunately, in the in the universities, I mean, not nothing related with all these uh, right. things. So I mean, basically, you're safe. Yeah. And so I mean, that was nice. Yeah. That, the political nice environment was like uh, something different. The security yeah. probably in general, but uh, you can do your own living and actually be happy and have a lot of fun and uh, great uh, memories and great remembering okay. about the life there yeah. a lot of friends well, great people nice people yeah well since, since you were nice, going to nice. going to you grew up in an area at high elevation then you went to school at an even higher elevation um so far above sea level <laughs> when did you get interested in like actually scuba diving yeah that's, that's i mean one of the things uh, when i uh uh, every time, uh, at least from uh, many of the people from Highlands, every time you look for uh, vacations, normally your parents, at least in Ecuador, I think some other parts of the of South America also, they're always looking for, you know, warm, warm weather, uh, coast, ocean. So normally we, are sp we used to spend all our vacations in the areas near the coast. So uh, when I was like uh, 14 years old, yes, around 14 years old, I went to Galapagos for first time because Galapagos is uh, one of the provinces of my country, Ecuador. So we spent some uh, vacations there, and I did a snorkeling for first time in my life. So it yeah. was something like changed my life forever. I mean, it was something really amazing. It was beautiful. 
So I saw some people with uh, on in these private yachts that they have scuba tanks. So I was remembering all these uh, uh, movies and uh, the documentaries that I used to see before. And uh, there were divers, so I got interested about scuba diving. So when I went to Colombia and I started in, uh, in uh, marine biology, the first thing I asked uh, is uh, when they're going to show us how to dive. And they said, okay, you have to wait until you get to the coast. So when I get the first thing, when I get in Santa Marta, in the Caribbean coast of Colombia, I was learning to dive. So I, I got my open water, my advance, and then uh, I think within the last, first three months, I get a master scuba diver. <laughs> I was doing a lot of diving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Great. Oh, that, that's, that's great. So, so, when you, so when you finished up at the university with um, your, you had a degree in marine biology and you had your scuba diving certificate, like, what what was the next step? What what did you do? What were you gonna? What was your next stage? What did you think? Like, where, what am I gonna do now? Yes, when I finished my uh, my degree in uh, marine biology back in 1995, wow, it's a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> and, Not uh, as long as me. <laughs> <laughs> I I went back to Ecuador, and obviously, by that point. In Ecuador, there was a lot of people involved in marine biology, but related to aquaculture, especially with shrimp farms, because uh, Ecuador was the first exporter of shrimp in the world at that point. So many of these uh, shrimp farms were offering a lot of uh, good uh, uh, money for marine biologists. I, I was. I, I took part of uh, aqu aquaculture, especially obviously in, 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 in shrimps when I was in the university, but I wasn't like I really specialized in that. But when I went there, I was like uh, uh, trying to find a job and actually I got my first job as a marine biologist in an aquaculture uh, farm in the north of the country in the province of Esmeraldas near to Colombia, probably in the area near to Colombia now in the coast. Uh, and it was like, a, it was fun, actually it was fun, because they have all the process, so they have all, you know, the big uh, females, so they, we do all the lab area, so we have the nucleus, we have the soyas, the prosuya, so we all the growing, so they used to pack all that and sell all these uh, small little, small uh, shrimps, uh, to the big farms so they can uh, develop it in big areas and also they have some big pools where they grow the the shrimps so it actually was a lot of, of work it was fun I learned a lot about that but uh, in some point it wasn't like exactly what I was like uh, wanted to do because I was uh, doing a lot of diving before I really I, at that point I was already a dive master so I really want to, every time I see the ocean, I want to look something for where can I go diving. And I was like in the middle of, you know, of these mangrove areas, beautiful areas, mm -hmm. but I mean, nothing to see actually. <laughs> and uh, the job was good, but, uh, but I, I wasn't like really happy doing that. So mm -hmm. then I started like uh, trying to find something extra. So then uh, many people start offering me some jobs in Galapagos. In a, but uh, as a volunteer for the Charles Darwin Research Station, uh, tell me like as a marine biologist you can develop this, that, as a diver you're the master, okay, probably, but we need instructors. So then uh, I think at the beginning of uh, my meet by May of uh, 1996, I traveled to Miami because mm -hmm. I have a friend here, he's still, he's still living here. And uh, I came with the idea to do a master's in, uh, in ichthyology because fishes were always like my passion. Right. And that weekend when I arrived, he was telling me, my friend was telling me that he learned to dive like three weeks before with this dive center here in, in the Miami area. So he called the dive center and we went that weekend uh, looking for scuba diving and it was so funny. I think the life is full of coincidences. So when we entered this dive center, uh, the owner was a Colombian guy and it was the person who was uh, selling all the dive equipment to the dive center that I used to work in Cartagena when I became a dive master. So the guy saw me and was like, oh, hello, how are you? Nice to see you. 
what are you doing here? So we start talking, and I told him that I was like interested in becoming a, you know, do some masters. So I was looking for uh, for school. So he told me, why you don't uh, first do your instructor, uh, your scuba diving instructor career? Yeah. So he recommend me at one school that is not in the business anymore, that it was uh, called uh, uh, Divers Unlimited uh, in Hollywood in Florida. Yeah. So I went there uh, like two or three days later and and they told me, yeah, yeah, in one week we're gonna open a instructor course. So immediately I got like, boop, I got into that and uh, I did it for three, three and a half, four, almost, almost four weeks. I did my instructor course and I became a fun instructor. And after wow. that, they offered me like a job placement and I got, and I got a job for three, uh, for three months in a, in British Virgin Islands, so I've been in three <laughs> months in British Virgin Islands. In total, I've been uh, uh, work, working as an instructor, so I mean, it was, it was an, a beautiful experience also, amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in wow. September, October uh, of uh, 1996, I went back to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Now, when you went back to Ecuador, you started like training a lot of people. Were, were a lot of people scuba diving in Ecuador at that time, or did you kind of like start training a lot of the people uh, from time and talk to you? Yeah, I mean, it was really funny because I went back to Quito, and I was a scuba instructor and also marine biology. So uh, I was like trying to find something because in Galapagos they were offering me jobs, but as a diving instructor more than a marine biologist. But then a friend of mine in Quito told me that he took a scuba diving course like two or three weeks before in Quito. And there was like this company uh, that they were based in Puerto Lopez. And I mean, they were, they have a little small uh, place and boat in Puerto Lopez and where the area where we were in the coast of Ecuador in the Machalilla National Park and Isla de la Plata. And that these people is bringing a diving instructor from Colombia to teach them. So I went to the guy, to the owner of this company, and I told him, look, I'm Ecuadorian, I'm a marine biologist, I'm a paddy instructor, and I can help you, we can do this. So the guy got interested, and we started like, uh, working, and I remember it was like uh, October 1996. So we started working in, uh, in, uh, in the scuba diving, and I started like, uh, you know, grabbing some people and uh, trying to get, I mean, making a lot of calls to many of my friends, and try to make them uh, learn how to scuba dive. And then I got involved into the scuba dive and developing the scuba dive. And um, it was interesting because uh, at the beginning it was really hard. I mean, it was like mouth to mouth, mouth to mouth, but many people got interested because I was give them a choice for all these people that they used to travel to every vacation finding or looking for coast for warm water, uh, weather and give them that choice instead of going to the beach, you know, to have some fun, to get drink and then get drunk and a full party. I said, okay, you can do that, but also you can scuba dive and you can have some extra activities, beautiful, better. And people got like an interest in that. And then uh, it was like, start growing, like mouth, 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 make it, uh, make it bigger. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 1997, I separate from these people and uh, I started uh, working with uh, some boat in Galapagos, give them uh, some uh, help, training some people there. And also I decided to start my own company uh, with the support of a French guy in, uh, in the coast in Machalilla in Puerto Lopez. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we found uh, Exploramar Diving by the end of 1997. So it was really fun because, I mean, at the beginning it was really, really hard. Yeah. But at the, at the end, I sold it in 2021 before moving back, uh, moving to the United States. And uh, it was amazing. We certified more than uh, 5,500 persons wow. in the country. Wow. Uh, I certified more than, uh, because during all this period, I became uh, the only and first uh, Ecuadorian paddy course director. So oh, wow. I, I train more than uh, I around 400, 450 is, is, is school instructors in Ecuador, club instructors. Wow. So it was a lot of uh, a lot of diving and a lot of training. 
<laughs> but that, so you had that business. You had that business for over twenty years, then, right? Yes, I run the business for more than uh, more than twenty five years. Wow! And uh, at the beginning, it was really hard because I was a marine biologist. I didn't know nothing about you know accountant, nothing right. about, about business uh, management, nothing about like uh, I mean, nothing about like how to run a business. But I mean, I. I I have to work a lot. I have to learn a lot. Uh, took some courses and learn, yeah. learn, learn, learn. So, I mean, yeah. also Paddy helped me a lot with a lot of right. training. So it was really good. Okay. Oh, good. And, and, and when you when no, go ahead, when you work in a in a in a business like that, being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, going from a scientist and then becoming an entrepreneur, I find there's a lot of people who are who are doing that right now, who are trying to do that right now. What was the the biggest challenge that you had to overcome when you decided to start your own business? I think first you need to have a lot of passion in what you're doing. Second, you need to have the serious commitment of decide. You have a lot of decision of exactly what you're looking for, and you have to put a lot of uh, I mean, a lot of uh, sacrifice, and uh, you have to work a lot. I mean, if if a yeah. normal person goes for a, a job, like, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day, probably you have to work 12 or 14 a day <laughs> until everything works. But at the end, if you do the things correctly, if you, the, the, I think if you do the things like a uh, slow step by step and mm -hmm. taking uh, the things slow and thinking and doing well, at the end, uh, I mean, everything will be, will be okay and you get a reward. So mm -hmm. for me, after 25 years, more or less, or a little bit more. Uh, I, I was tired of doing the same thing for many, many years. I felt like uh, I was like getting like uh, tired uh, about teaching scuba diving classes, right. and then I start feeling like uh, a little bit surprised and old <laughs> because <laughs> they start having uh, these these kids that come to me and said, "Look, uh, I want to learn how to dive because you train my granddad." I said, "What? <laughs> Who's your granddad?" <laughs> They tell, tell me, and they go, oh, okay, man. <laughs> so, hey, you know, I'm in trouble, man. Huh? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I think it was like a, a good time to say, okay, Louis, I think it's time to move. <laughs> love it. Oh, I love it. What did you, what, what point along the way, because you had this passion for the ocean, this passion for diving, at what point did you get fascinated with the, uh, 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 manta rays specifically. How'd you get? How'd you? How'd you end up getting fascinated with that one, one species? Uh, actually, it was the first time ever in 1996, September 1996, the first time ever that I dive in uh, Isla de la Plata. Mm -hmm. uh, I I never been in the in the Machalilla National Park before that. Uh, I came uh, back from the United States, you know, you know from Tortola, all these areas, back to Ecuador. And I was with a, a friend of mine and with my cousin. And we, they, they told me that there's this national park and they, they heard about the whales, the humpback whales in the area, the whale watching. There was like brand new industry that everything is developed. So they told me, let's go and check that. So we drive from Quito around eight hours. And we get this amazing area that you that you've been before that you see it uh, some months ago, and it was like fascinated for me because the, the area was beautiful. And then the the, the the soon as I got there, I was like looking where I can dive. And uh, actually, one guy because Puerto Lopez, as you saw it like a month and a half ago, it was nothing like that. I mean, it was like a real fisherman's a small fisherman's uh, village. Uh, it wasn't not too much technology, nothing, and uh, the streets were like uh, all uh, in uh, ground, not uh, you know pavement or nothing like that. Yeah. Uh, you have more dogs than people sometimes in the street. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a disaster, really, really dirty. But it was like a really, really poor uh, fisherman's area. And uh, but beautiful, beautiful people were really real. So I asked between the fishermen. I mean, we were asking about the well watching, and uh, I asked them uh, about scuba diving, and they told me, yes, actually, there are some people that comes to dive sometimes, 
and but you have to drive uh, 25, 30 minutes south to an area called um, Olong because there's uh, these two Germans that they, they rent scuba diving equipment. So I said, oh, cool. So I convinced my uh, cousin and my friend, so we drive there and I rent uh, scuba tanks, I rent the gear. They, they have some decent things, not like the best thing, but decent. So we try everything on uh, with these people and then we came back to Puerto Lopez and then uh, we hire this fisherman and this guy, he's still in the area, he's still in the area, Paco, and he has a, a really <laughs> wood like a fisherman's boat and he took us to Isla de la Plata with a 75 outboard. So it was cold, it was September, and a normal September, not a Nino year. It was cold, it was windy, the ocean was rough in comparison of the Caribbean that I was like uh, in touch. Yeah. <laughs> and when we get to Isla de la Plata, I mean, it was amazing, but it was so long, the trip. Obviously we were with 175 outboard, mm -hmm. like crossing only 25 miles. So it was like two hours, two hours and a half trip. And when we got there, I mean, I, I really like, I love it, Isla de la Plata. And these guys said, oh, now you can dive in this area. So he moves around to a place that we know now as uh, the lighthouse reef. So it's not like a really deep area. So I was like preparing everything and I was like, uh, make down my cousin and my friend doing a discovery scuba diving so i was preparing them giving them a briefing and everything so as soon as i got these two guys ready to enter the water doing back row and this guy the fisherman said no 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 don't jump in the water there's a shark in the water and i saw this like uh fin coming out of the water and obviously they 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 didn't jump so right. when i saw it yes i saw the fin but it was like a fin from the one of the one of the wings of the manta ray. And I saw this uh -huh. black shadow, like amazing shadow. I never saw a manta ray before in my life, never ever. Saw it only on video, probably in books, but I never imagined the size, but I knew mm -hmm. it that they're totally in, unoffensive. So I told them, no, no, come on, let's jump in the water. They don't know anything. Come on, let's jump. And they said, no, are you crazy? <laughs> but I jumped in the water and they <laughs> didn't jump. They missed out. Yes, but I mean, I was alone, and, and then at the, when I was in the water at the beginning, go like, uh, should I crazy or not? I mean, what I did. But then immediately I saw the manta ray, and the manta was there. It was a big, big manta ray. I assume it was a female for the size. Right. I didn't know exactly it was a female male at that point. But I saw the eye, and we make immediately eye contact with the manta ray, and that is something that uh, basically, I mean, Change everything. I mean, it was like something that, uh, wow, it was something well, that's like... That's it. I've always wondered what it's like. I've never seen a manta ray in, in the wild like that, especially up close. You know, you have a science background. You, you know, you know sharks, you know rays, you you know fish, you know reefs. What, what, how did you feel when you first saw that, like up close and personal, seeing a manta ray of that size? I mean, it was something like, uh, it was like something like hitting you, like a lightning strike hitting you in the heart, like something like, like uh, change everything forever. I mean, you can, you can feel that inside that big individual wasn't a fish. It, it was something else. I mean, it's, it's not mm -hmm. a fish. It's something else. Uh, I'm still thinking for me now, I'm still thinking they're like an aliens. They're from other planets. I mean, they're like a. There's something else. They're they're so smart. They're so so friendly, so beautiful individuals. And when they really want to make contact with you, they really they really go and and, uh, and go close to you. And you can feel like you can feel like uh, I don't know. I mean, you can feel like uh, love. I mean, you can feel yeah. like uh, peaceful from these individuals. So it was something like uh, it was uh, uh, crazy, and I was like uh, probably two, three, four meters, and in, uh, in this reef, and the manta ray stayed with me for uh, I don't know 30 minutes. Oh, and it wow. was like something like weird. And then when I yeah. went up, I was like throwing bubbles. The manta ray come over to my bubbles, and I was like, "What's going on here?" Mm -hmm. So it was wow. something like uh, one experience that uh, I mean I always like keep it for for always in in my heart. I mean there was something like. Totally, totally crazy. These guys obviously never jump in the water. I was telling you, come on, nothing happened. And they said, you still never yeah, You're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. something beautiful. Yeah, yeah just, just so people know that I was actually just uh, in Isla de, or in Puerto Lopez uh, with Michelle uh, just like about six weeks ago. We're doing this, taping this show now in October. I was there in August, September with them. And we went out there to go diving there. And of course, Michelle, the Mayanarese did not make an appearance while I was there. Uh, of course, they showed up a little <laughs> later. Um, but it is, a, I will say, it's a pretty amazing place. I had an amazing time out there diving. And then, and, and I, as you're describing this in my mind, I'm just picturing the location and everything and what it must have been like the first time going in the water or actually seeing a manta ray fin at the surface and then going, well, I'm going in the water anyway just to look to see what this thing is. <laughs> and and so so from this thing, you developed this lifelong passion for, the, for these uh, amazing crit, critter, critters? Yes, obviously then I was like working uh, in, the, in the diving industry, like teaching people. So I getting a lot of access to Isla de la Plata. So many of the, of the local Ecuadorian scientists that they start like developing, you know, projects with uh, small projects like with uh, corals, and everybody start calling me and said, "Hey, you you know how to dive? Could you help us with this, with that?" So I start related with uh, many universities. I start related with all the scientists. Mm -hmm. So obviously, every time we go, I was looking for the manta rays again. So sometimes I see them, sometimes not. So every year I start like uh, getting more in, in uh, you know, try to learn more and learn, learn more about what, what they're doing, where they're coming from, where they're going. So in, 19, in 2004, 2005, I got this, uh, this student from England and he was a photographer, like a land photographer. So he appeared in Ecuador and he was, uh, he was an advanced diver. So he told me that uh, he wants to become a rescue diver. So I trained him and we became really good friends. Actually, then he became an instructor with me. And then uh, one, he went back to England. Then he came back to work with me and uh, work together in, in Puerto Lopez. And he got a, a small camera. But that time, I also went to Dima show and I got my first uh, Sea Life, the yellow ones with roll and everything, <laughs> with film, remember? Oh, yeah. uh, I got those yep. cameras. So then we start like uh, 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 checking in the beginnings of the internet of whatever uh, literature we can have available. And then we learned that we have to do photos of the of the of the uh, ventral areas of the manta rays because ventral, that's the yeah. way you identify them. So mm -hmm. then we start noting that the manta rays start appearing between June, June, July, May, June, July, August, September. So it was with the the humble current start uh, entering all the area, mm -hmm. exactly the same uh, time where the with the whales with the humble whales visiting the area. So we said, oh, look, what is it? when the cold water comes is where the manta rays are. Also talking a lot with fishermen that I have a lot of uh, good, uh, good relations with fishermen. So always like a uh, big friend of these people, especially with the artisanal fishermen, the real, the real people, the really whew, amazing like uh, ocean lovers, many of them. So they were like, uh, you know, you know, this is a good spot that you have to go. You can go and check them. Normally we see them here, there. So we start, you used to go with this guy and start like uh, shooting photos, shooting photos, shooting photos. So actually in uh, the year 2008, I went to the Ministry of Environment and I asked my first uh, research permit. So they tell me, oh, Manta Rays, oh yeah. I mean, they didn't know too much about Manta Rays, so they gave us a permit. <laughs> and uh, uh, that year, uh, probably between June, July, August, and September, the, like the high season, uh, for us was really good because we, we went diving for more than uh, 40 days. And all these days, for the, it was a high season, so we make a lot of diving. And every time we go diving, we, we have the chance to see some mantas, so we shoot photos. But at the end of the season, we got uh, more than 100 mantas. Whoa. So for us, it was 100 mantas for all like a hundred Ecuadorian mantas. So when I started like looking for some people outside, trying to find who's uh, working with manta rays, who's like uh, doing manta ray uh, work, it wasn't too much people around, but some people, and uh, especially, I don't really, really remember the guys, uh, there was this uh, guy who was working in Hawaii. I, I saw him in Dima show, in the diving mm -hmm. show. 
So I told him I have 100 plantas for, for Ecuador. And he told me, yeah, how many years you've been doing this? And I said, no, that was only for the last season. I said, how long is your season? I said, like, uh, four months with about 40 days. And they, they, I mean, this guy started laughing at me and said, I mean, you're crazy. I mean, it's impossible, 100 plantas in uh, so yeah. many short period of time. So I said, no, I mean, it's true. I can, I have the photos you roll and also I have the, you know, the negatives. I have, I mean, they're, they're real. I, I took the photos. Yeah. So they, the, the too many people didn't believe us too much. So I said, okay, I don't care. I want to keep doing it. So we started like keep doing it. They start like making more and more connections, try to find more and more people. So in the year 2010, that year, we received the visit of uh, four or five uh, different researchers. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one from US, two or three from England. And uh, every time everybody jumps in the water, as soon as they went out, they were saying, oh, you don't know what you got here. And we got, no, 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 we know exactly we what know. we have here. <laughs> We've been telling you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why we decided to create, like, a, you know, like something like uh, Ecuadorian, that a project uh, that uh, we can involve people, we can uh, uh, provide a, a and our, uh, the area we can provide the help, we can provide uh, the, the experience to different people, and, uh, but also we can learn from other people so we can make, uh, you know, agreements, yeah. we can make a memorandum of understanding. So we do, we start, we, we did that with uh, some organizations and uh, then we start like uh, doing a lot of research, learning a lot from many people and uh, until the year 2015 when we got together with the Manta Trust group, I, I met uh, Guy Stevens and actually in 2014 I met the Manta Trust in, uh, in the CMS convention in Ecuador because I was a representative from the country for the manta rays. And uh, so I, I was talking with these people, then I made the connection with Guy Stevens, with George Stewart, and then we make an agreement. And they will start like uh, doing like, a, I think a really good, uh, a really good uh, uh, agreement and a lot of uh, really good science. Mm -hmm. Very oh, nice. Great. Oh, that, that's really good. So that, so you've, you've now you've, you've continued to run this, these uh, various, uh, the, the the NGOs now and you pretty much your focus is on on doing the research and conservation with the uh, with these different with 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 the manta rays now. Is that pretty, that's pretty. Yes, much I mean uh, the the Fundación Mejor Fauna Marina del Ecuador has uh, two or three different projects. One project is uh, working with some uh, friends in Ecuador that they work with sharks. Uh, they're based in the coast of Ecuador and they're used to, start, I mean, they work a lot in Galapagos, but now they're like uh, opening also to work in the coast. And uh, I, I was focusing in the coast of Ecuador for many, many years. And we have more than 3,000 mantas to identify now. We did a lot of wow. stuff. Wow. And now we are obviously trying to do the same thing that we did uh, in the coast. We're trying to do two Galapagos. So I started working in Galapagos three or four years ago. So we're trying to do the same thing. Why in Galapagos? Because at the beginning, we thought it was the same population. But obviously, I mean, it was it's a different one. <laughs> when we run DNA analysis in the coast and also in Galapagos, we found that there are two different populations. So it's amazing. So because now we have to start like basically everything now in Galapagos. So we, we're like, uh, again, we're like in Pampers in Galapagos, again, like le learning a lot, knowing uh, different areas. And in the, co in the coast of Ecuador, we're like uh, really advanced. We, we, we learn a lot, we know a lot, and we start doing a lot of science, like uh, we're doing not only photo ID, we're doing like uh, a matter of photogrammetry, we're measuring individuals. Uh, we also deploy in satellite tags, two different types of tags, so we can learn uh, large scale movements. Obviously, mm -hmm. with the idea to learn where they're moving and also uh, learn uh, patterns of uh, mo uh, movements in, uh, within the local areas and also yeah. international waters uh, with the main uh, purposes of objective of uh, conservation locally, regionally, or internationally. Uh, also, we are deploying acoustic tagging so we can learn more about what they're doing during the season, in, whether in the local coast. So then we learn more 
about what they're doing. Also, in this population, it's amazing because it's the only population in the world with oceanic manta rays uh, where we have uh, more males than females. 60 oh. more, 60 around percent of the, of the population are males and 40% are females. And from the females, we've seen big, big females, like really mature females. And we start seeing females with the fresh scars of mating. We've seen uh, pregnant females. So we see males, like a lot of males, like uh, also mature males. So we now are thinking and we're seeing every time that uh, probably is not only the most important area in the world with the largest population, but probably could be one of the most important, if not the most important area where the giant matters are mating and reproducing. So probably it's a really amazing uh, reproduction area. Right. Also, we learn a lot of uh, where these uh, individuals are feeding due to the movements of the of the yep. of the individuals. So we learned that these individuals are feeding uh, 400, 500 meters uh, down during the night. So they're amazing individuals, they're amazing creatures. And uh, also, we they're the only place in the world where we have these individuals being cleaned by five different fishes. Other parts of the mm. world, there are two, three. <laughs> but in this area, we have five different fishes that clean the mantas. Wow. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we yeah. see. A lot of huge manta rays with a lot of remoras on it. Some uh, big females with more than 100 remoras. You don't see so wow. many remoras. In 100? The more than 100. We have proofs, that we have is... videos, we have photos. You have wow. small remoras, big remoras. I mean, yeah. like all the remora family all wow. over the manta. So crazy. So there's still a lot of stuff to do, yeah. a lot of stuff to study, all these relations. And uh, obviously in Galapagos, now we're also starting everything again. So, yes, I mean, doing a lot of stuff and uh, really happy. Where does yeah, it, the, yeah. this population in Ecuador, where does it go? Does it, does it, on this international migration, does it stay along the, the South American coast? Does it go out into the middle of the Pacific? Where, where does it go? Okay, these uh, population concentrates basically or aggregates uh, within the months of June, July, August, September, where the Humboldt current are in the area. Right. Why in this area, specific area? Because uh, the Humboldt current hits the north area of Peru, the south of Ecuador, and because of the of the of the Nazca uh, plate or the coastal plate, it creates a huge upwelling. So it's a lot of nutrients. And yeah. combined with the waters, the fresh water that comes from the, the from the Ecuador in the, this huge area in the Gulf of Guayaquil, we have a huge mix of uh, underwater water with full of nutrients together with this uh, uh, fresh water. So amount, a big, big, incre incredible, big amount of, uh, of uh, nutrients in this area. So a lot of uh, big animals in this area. And this water column moves all around the coast to Ecuador until the half of the country. And there it moves in the Ecuadorian line all the way to Galapagos. That's why Galapagos also is influenced, influenced by the Humboldt current. So we, we have all this amazing aggregation in all this area. So the individual basically moves parallel to the coast of Ecuador all the way to the Machalija National Park park area, a little bit northern, but mostly in this area between the center of Ecuador and then goes down. And we share the population together with Peru in the north of Peru. So when the mantas are normally in the, by the month, probably what, what we see with the satellite tagging is after the months of October, November, the individual that start like hanging down all the way south, going back south with the humble coin that is start decreasing, going back down south. They start decreasing, going south to Peru, south in the north of Peru, but stay in the north area of Peru, and then around like Mancora and Organos, all that north of Peru area, they start moving west. And normally by uh, December, uh, January, they start moving southwest. And then, unfortunately, we lose the, 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 the track because we lose the tax. We have two individuals that went west uh, directly to Galapagos. That's why we thought it was the same population or we shared the population. 
Now we're doing a lot of, uh, we have two individuals also that start going north and we lost the track. So now we're doing a lot of uh, working together with uh, Costa Rica and with some people in Panama now, trying to see if we can have some photo ID, also some DNA, so we can compare, probably, because it's a huge population, some mm -hmm. individuals could go north. We probably we share with them. Definitely we share 100% of the population with Peru. So we have these uh, Ecuadorian, Peruvian manta rays that we share in the waters. That's amazing. Yeah. That's we don't know yet where, where they come back. That's right. why mm -hmm. we're trying to see if next year by May, hopefully by January, we can tag some mantas in the north of Peru with the help of uh, some Peruvian uh, researchers mm -hmm. or in the areas of Panama to see if these mantas are moving to Ecuador or not. Probably to right. try yeah. to find out what they're, what they're like, there, you know, the circle. Yeah, yeah, that, oh, cool. that's an amazing, amazing amount of research you guys have managed to do there with your with your organization. And I, I mean, it was really, really pretty cool. The, 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 the group you guys met this year to go out and had, had people from all over the world really come in that at Love Mantis to do research on them. Is that something you do typically? Is that or is that something new you did this year? No, it was something like uh, really amazing that happened this year uh, because we've been talking with uh, Guy Stevens uh, from Manta Trust mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with the help of uh, one of the big donors, uh, Carl F. Bucherer, the Swiss company from Watches, that they helped put together this uh, expedition. So we put the first uh, expedition for the like Eastern Pacific people so we have uh, friends from uh, Mexico, we have friends from Costa Rica, we have friends from uh, Peru, and obviously they invite some other, I mean, we have uh, researchers from Galapagos that work together with us, and then we have some people that uh, work and manterrace in the Maldives, people that do a specific job, uh, for example, Nee Froman that works with, uh, you know, with the, uh, a reproduction um, ecology of manta rays. So we've been all these people together in Ecuador and uh, for this like uh, event, first time ever. And it was something like really amazing. Unfortunately, the mantas didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> of course, right? That was the bug. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I mean, we're still, looking, we're still looking who was the black cat in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, well, I have to say, like, I, I have to say, like, I, 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 I was there for part of the trip, and like after I left, I think a day or two after I left, the, the whale sharks actually showed up, and I would have been more. I've seen manta rays. I'd like to have seen the whale sharks, and then after the whale sharks, I think a few manta rays finally showed up, uh, showed up this year after everybody <laughs> leaves, which is that was a phenomenal yeah, story yeah. in itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, got, I mean. It's a different year because we have a El Nino event. So for us as a researcher, it's like also a good year for research where, you know, we have data. But yeah. I was so sorry that many people were so excited because we released the paper last year uh, in November about the largest population in the world. So everybody was so excited to see the largest population. And unfortunately, they didn't see it. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I, so I have a, I have a bit of a, a, an off the wall question here, change it, change it a little bit of the direction of the conversation. So you're one of the few people, and certainly I think people in our audience of a certain age will appreciate this. The younger people may not. I'm not sure, but I noticed when you're on your uh, kind of your your posting there, you have a picture of Kiss, the band, and I got to tell you that got my attention because you and I are of, I'm a little older than you, but of in that same era. So I have to ask you to kind of share with everybody your sort of interest in the band kiss because they're not, i'm sure the younger people may be may or may not be as aware of them but tell tell us about that <laughs> <laughs> okay when i was like uh probably was like uh, six or seven years old uh, mm -hmm. my cousins uh, because i have family in the united states my cousins used to travel back to ecuador for vacations and sometimes, obviously, they're big, like, uh, I was like uh, seven, uh, six, seven years at that time, and they were like 14, 13 years old. So there was, you know, there was oh, yeah. the mood in the 70s yeah. mood, and there, there, there wasn't yeah. on the disco music, there were, there were more like rock guys. 
So they're always like uh, trouble with Led Zeppelin, with Black Sabbath, with Keys, all these uh, rock uh, yep. bands, albums. So they were listening to that because they used to stay in, 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 my, in my home. So I started like loving that kind of music. So obviously <laughs> when I saw Keys first time, I got like impressed about the makeup and everything. So I started like, uh, I, I remember my first album was uh, Rock and Roll Over. So it was amazing because it was like this, nice. uh, you know, full colorful and the band, oh, and yeah. the, and the, you know, the mystic of the band and everything and all the news. We, we <laughs> didn't got too much news in South America at that point, but it was like every time I traveled to the United States in the summer uh, or, uh, or my cousins came to visit us, they're always bringing like, you know, uh, the Circus magazine, Hit Parader magazines, because they're, they're all like, uh, they're all in that mood. So it was like amazing for me because I was watching them and I was like following. And then I remember when a Dynasty came out, so I started following Kiss a lot. I was like listening to the album all the time. It was eight year old. <laughs> so I was crazy about that music. So since then so, I, lo I started like loving it. I love it. You've met, you've met some of the band members now, right? Uh, yeah, I went to 25 per shows. I saw Kiss 25, 25. times. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> yes, and then 2014, uh, Keys play in Ecuador. So wow. I got a meet and greet, and I took my son. That at that point, I think she, he was 10 years old. And uh, nice. we've been in with the band in the in the afternoon. It was like an amazing, amazing experience. They were so great with my son. Yeah. They played some music. He was like telling them play, uh, you know, some songs. Is he a fan as well? Yeah, yeah, I mean, for at least for Keys, yes, and yeah. uh, so he was like uh, telling them, you know, play this song, please this other song, and the guys were like laughing, and they were playing, and they all took photos with him, nice. so it was amazing, it was an amazing yeah. experience. I mean, because they did they did a, a show uh, without the makeup, they do an unplugged show uh, okay. with the fans, so that's right. the meet and greet, that it was amazing. And oh, then yeah. at night they get the, you know, the paint, the customs, yeah. everything, and they invite you for the photo. And also they took a lot of time with my son to do nice. some photos with him. Also when they posted in the in the key social media, it was amazing because there was Ecuador and there was a photo with keys with my son. So it was something. Oh, you're beautiful. kidding. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, something uh, amazing. And I was like, you'll have to send us that post. We'll put the link in if you don't mind. We can yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll post I, I, that. I, I was to, yeah, I yeah, it was That's... amazing. It was more than a million posts of like a uh, like. So I was like, wow, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, oh man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, now, yeah. Now, now, are, they, are they in like a, a final, is this their final year, or their final tour now they're going on? Yeah, yes, unfortunately it is. And uh, what I think oh. is like uh, time, I think they're tired. And actually oh. it's going to be on the second and the third of December. There were the last two shows in the Madison Square Garden, unfortunately really expensive ticket so yeah i cannot go yeah. oh, <laughs> but man. i saw them twice in uh, no three times in this tour <laughs> oh okay oh that's oh that's yeah. awesome yeah. Well, since, since you have the since you have a lot of since you have all this musical experience especially historical like can you tell us what do you think is going to happen with uh, taylor swift and kelsey travis <laughs> I don't know travis, kelsey. <laughs> travis kelsey not kelsey travis, travis, travis kelsey. oh sorry travis, <laughs> sorry, travis. <laughs> I, I I heard something I think in social media about this like a uh, football player <laughs> and uh, something like that. But yeah. I, I didn't yeah. follow that. Yeah, yeah. probably the biggest uh, pop star in the. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. I didn't even know who he. I didn't even know who he was since I obviously got his name wrong. <laughs> I just I didn't know the it. name of her because I heard about her name because I think she did something with Def Leppard some years ago. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Oh, Def Leppard. Yeah, yeah, yeah could have. Could have been, yeah, yeah. could have been. Oh man! So that, that, this has been a great, this has been a great interview. We got to <laughs> definitely, uh, we got to, got to definitely have you back sometime, Michelle. But before, before we wrap up here, I got to ask you a question. We always uh, like to close with all our guests. Is like, what advice would you have for a young person who's a teenager, early twenties, is really fascinated by marine biology and marine science? Like, what, what advice would you have for someone who's interested in pursuing a similar path that you've chosen i mean first thing is like uh do all all what you want to do with passion follow your your dreams uh keep working and uh i mean the things are not easy 
but if you keep working, if you persist and you like do it, do it, do it and keep doing it, uh, sooner or later a lot of uh, doors will open and persistence and uh, passion, I mean, and do it everything with love and uh, I think that when you do that and uh, focusing in, the, in your objective and uh, follow your dream, I mean, sooner or later it will come. Okay, great. All awesome. Right. Well, it, it, Love it's that. been awesome. It's been awesome having you. That's a true great way to finish up. And uh, anyway, I hope, I'm looking forward to see, meeting up again with you and doing some diving. And I, I really, we, we're looking forward to have you back on the show again, Michelle. This oh, thank you very interview. much for your invitation. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed it to be with you guys. And hopefully I can dive with you soon uh, oh. in Ecuador and in Galapagos. You're welcome. Oh. That awesome. would be amazing. Invitation Anytime. received and taken. We'll be there. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Michelle. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye, -bye.